Alright, and we're back again after some technical difficulties with programs crashing as they please, I guess. This technical technological world, I guess, will never be we'll never have the perfect system that just chooses to work or it continues to work as it should when we need it to. <sighs> but if you're just tuning in or if you're going to just tune in, this is our weekly armory events held on a Friday this time here at the Haven Games. Uh, tomorrow they're hosting another event that'll take up most of the store space, so they felt it was a good idea to do it tonight. Which, uh, I agree with. Uh, as spacious as this place is, I'd prefer not to have, uh, clashing events with too many people if it's expected to be a big one, so. As I said before, uh, we got uh, AJ on the left here playing Briar and Josue on the, uh, right playing Fi. Hey, there we go. What's up, man? Glad you could make it on. I hope, uh... Hope you weren't interrupted too much by the stream crash there. Um, and don't forget, guys, uh, if you go to thehavengames.com, or Haven, thehaventabletop.com. I keep forgetting that's the extra URL. I know. I really wish, you all. You I really just wish got... we could have gotten games and put, like, a casino or something on it. They want, like, six grand for the URL. Yeah, let's not do that. Yeah. All right, uh, the One Haven day. Tabletop is fine. One day. Um, so yeah, go to the haventabletop.com and use the promo code Team ACG for ten percent off all the fab singles that you'd want to purchase. Uh, and we, as always, we thank the the Haven Games for hosting uh, these events each week and letting us stream them for you guys. It's a very cool thing we get to do. Only thanks to their help. Uh, so it looks like we're coming to the end of this game. We might even just cut out the first part of the stream on uh, the VODs there, but uh, or maybe we'll leave it up. I'll leave it up to AJ to figure out what he wants to do with them there. But uh, looks like AJ's coming in. We're still looking to close out the game here. Josue does not, still has his Arcane Barrier, so he's not just dead. Uh, but each Rosetta Thorn Swing is going to always leak in one extra damage. I don't know if Josue has what it takes to kind of close out the game otherwise. If that is a blue in his hand with the Ancestral Empowerment, I feel like you block the Ancestral Empowerment. Block with the Ancestral Empowerment and uh, the Arcane Barrier... Er, er, excuse me. Arcane damage as much as you can. Uh, and then just blaze headlong for four damage. No, it doesn't look like it's a blue, though, because he just let it hit. That's four damage, though. He's, he can't just ignore that. This is a tough situation for Swag because uh, it's definitely coming in for two arcane off the Rosetta Thorn. So four damage off this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if there's a way for, for a host weight. So if he blocks with the Ancestral, he'll take one, go to three. Or he'll do that and block four. Block with the Ancestral on the... Rosetta Thorn, take two. And then he still has like a Blaze Headlong and something else he can play. I think that was a Scar for a Scar, so that's actually not bad. Eight damage, he can still play off two cards. Although, uh, if he does go to... Yeah, if he goes to one... No, no, he'll go to two. That's still not great. Oh, no, Josue, you can keep the... Oh, no, there he goes. So it looks like he's trying to keep the Ancestral Empowerment. That doesn't work on the Scar for a Scar, though, so I don't know why he's trying to keep that. Hmm. I feel like I would have kept the Blaze Headlong and do Scar for Scar into Blaze Headlong. Eight damage is pretty wild here in the late game. AJ will be able to just tank it and just keep the full grip. But at least Josue can say that he pounds him down just a little bit more in case uh, AJ's hand is not great and he can't close out, uh, even though Josue is like... Wait... Can you use ancient ancient uh, or ancestral empowerment on uh, Scar for Scar? Does it just say target attack action? Hang on, I was like, oh, I gotta double check this right now because I have not seen someone try and use that on anything other than an actual ninja card before to try and get the hit the or the uh, hit proc in. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's go. Let's check this out. Ancestral Empowerment. Let's take a look here real quick. If it does work like that, I guess that's kind of wild, but I still disagree. I guess he wants to arsenal a card so that he has a little bit more momentum and does a little bit of damage, so that's not the worst. That's so weird, though. Does it happen? 
No, it says target ninja attack action. Uh oh. Uh oh. Er. Maybe you can still. No, no, because you still have to target a, a ninja attack action card. Yeah, I don't think you can play that unless you have a ninja attack action card to actually target it. So I guess we'll figure out what uh, went on there. Maybe they just overlooked it, or maybe it was just such a. Or it's been such a long time since AJ's seen Ancestral Empowerment that he forgot that little caveat there. But uh, either way, I think AJ's in a commanding position enough here to where he doesn't even need to worry about the extra damage he let through because he's got Snatch with Go again. And the. Um... Oh, and he's got the Fused and. Uh... What is it called? Uh, force of Nature here. So this is coming in for five, potentially six, if he decides to crack the amulet. So I think AJ is going to close this out here right now. That's why he's going to have to block with two threes if he wants to just make sure this doesn't hit. No, he can live with one if he has the two three blocks, honestly. I see he has a lot of in loyalty. That'll, that'll do it. And Salt Wound, yes, he needs to block with both of these cards right now if he wants to live. Because then he can just block the two damage off the Rosetta Thorn and block one of the Arcane to go to one health. Uh, to be honest, though, when you go to one health like this... Oh, nope. Yeah, he's dead. Yep. AJ just needs to crack that, and he gets a plus one. He draws two cards, and just murders his way with whatever he gets. Unless, Josue, yeah, he's switching up. Okay, AJ's letting him switch it up. This is a pretty casual armory here, guys. We're just uh, playing We're playing to uh, kind of learn and do our best here. Try and get those promos, of course, but uh, I don't think anyone's going to... I think AJ feels also that he's in a pretty comfortable position here to where he doesn't need to uh, shark uh, Josue on that little mistake there. So, very powerful turn by AJ. All he needs is one more turn where he can swing Rosetta Thorn for the two Arcane, and he should be able to close this out. I do not know what Josue has Arsenal there, but he may not be able to play it, or can he? Oh, just a day, uh, Rising Resentment. So, AJ's probably just going to tank this, do the Rosetta combo, and close out the game on the next turn. Good first game, though. Two very aggro decks, but um, Briar proving to still be in a very commanding position in the meta right now, even with Phi being kind of the uh, fresher face on the flesh and blood, or in the flesh and blood scene right now. Oh, and starting with a Gorg Tome of all things, just to make sure he can get the extra non attack to give the card go again, the attack action go again. By the way, I was way playing uh, Sasha Sandakai, which I think is uh, interesting, but not a bad decision. Usually with Fi, you're trying to make fast games happen, and uh, you want to have that on-demand uh, uh, resource, even on turns where it's like the early game, possibly within the first two turns before the tunic would be available. So, uh, yep. Yeah, AJ with the embodiment of Lightning Token here is definitely going to be able to close out the game with a Rosetta Swing, so this should be GG here. Just depends on what attack action he has in hand. Or hopefully he does have an attack action in hand. Yeah, he's got Snatch. Okay, yeah. This is this is GG, guys. All he needs is this, swing the Rosetta, and it's good game. Because I do not see an Oasis for Spite in Josue's hand, and I see a Phoenix Flame, of all things, in his hand, so... Yeah, not what you want to see on uh, when you're at lethal range for any attack, basically. Actually, I think Josue needs to block with his entire hand, and he still takes one from the... Uh, yeah, he still takes one from the uh, Snatch itself. Oh, that's the worst. One of the risks you play when it comes to having all these Gogan decks is having cards that only block for two instead of three does hurt in uh, very specific situations like this. But uh, good game from Josue. Uh, AJ goes ahead and takes the first round. And uh, we are actually pretty early into the round here, so it shouldn't be long, or it may be a while before the next round. I might go get some packs to open them up on stream, guys. So uh, hang tight for a minute, and I'll be right back to uh, come and talk to you guys before the next match.
Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back. I am here as we're waiting for the second round to get started. The first round went pretty fast uh, for those of you just tuning in, just because it was a uh, five versus Briar. Two pretty uh, hardcore aggro decks that want to go as fast as possible, so not surprising that it ended within like 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. But I wanted to open a few packs on stream, and I wanted to let you guys know about a cool new item that the Haven has on their website. It's called the, the Six Mystery Pack Bundle. 20 bucks gets you six mystery pack or six mystery packs, which does include Monarch and possibly Crucible first, as I've been told by Matt. So I bought one of them. I'm gonna go ahead and open it on stream here, and we're gonna open a few packs while we wait for the next round to start. Alrighty here, let's see what we got. Very uh, cleanly wrapped in uh, what looks to be just uh, brown paper bags. <laughs> uh, humble, humble, uh, humble packs here. All right, we've got one Arcane Rising, one uh, Welcome to Wraith, one Crucible Unlimited, one Everfest, and two Uprising. That's uh, that's a pretty good spread right there for six packs for twenty bucks. Sure, I'll take it. Pretty nice there. Oh, so close to Crucible first though. Mm, that would have been nice. Not like I'm actually looking. Okay, yes, I'm looking for something. I have one cold foil from Crucible that I did not get when I should have, and it's Gambler's Gloves. I would have everything cold foiled out on Reinar if I had that. Hey, James, what's up, buddy? So let's go ahead and open. What should I open up first, guys? For uh, James or uh, Brandalorian or Pocknock, whoever's still in here? What should I open up first? Or we're waiting here. But yeah, one of these days I might just splurge on the uh, Gambler's Gloves that the Haven has here in their inventory just to uh, bling everything out for Reinar. I've been playing him pretty consistently lately, and I've gone 4-0 in a few armories uh, without any... Oh, sorry, uh, we got uh, Arcane, Welcome to Wraith, Crucible, uh, Crucible Unlimited, by the way, um, Everfest, and then two Uprising. Do it for Dash? Alright, I can't refuse that request there. So we're going to go ahead with our Uprising pack. Arcane pack. Viserai on the front. He was the first hero that I played out of uh, Arcane Rising, so that might might mean something. Alright, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Actually, not terrible. I got a Foil Chains of Eminence. Uh, I think the other rare was just Pedal to the Metal and Take Cover Blue. But, uh... Yo, Foil Chains of Eminence, I'll take that. I think Chains of Eminence is like a wildly nice looking card. I just wish it saw more play outside of the one time I used it in a uh, Road to Nationals against Chain. Oh, no, no, it wasn't against Chain. I had it for Chain, but I used it against Bolton to stop him from using Lumina Ascension two turns in a row. And then I Soul Harvested all his uh, soul out with uh, Levia. That was pretty fun. Took, uh, like, 17 damage with all the souls that got ripped out and the base damage. So, felt pretty good. Felt pretty good. Very disgusting. Very good, though. Uh, so I'll take that. Chains of Eminence. Ah, oh, such a cool-looking card. I do hope it sees more play. Uh, funny enough, Guardians can at least search it with, um... What's it? Imposing Visage. It lets you search any uh, aura. It doesn't just say Guardian Aura. And Chains of Eminence is an aura. So... Since we're doing the uh, early packs, I'll go ahead and open up Welcome to Wraith 2 while we're waiting for the next round. Let's see what we got here. But yeah, these uh, value packs. $20 for mystery packs. That's pretty cool. Alright, and it looks like out of this one, the most we got for our special card, our good card, is the Foil Bark Bone Strapping. Bark Room Strapping is a pretty good equi chest equipment if you're either going Blitz Reinar, Blitz Levia. Yeah, even Blitz. No, no, no. You always go the chest plate if you're going Blitz Levia. Unless it's Wizard. I've used this against Wizard to pretty good effect. Just in case they try and hit me while I have zero cards left in hand, I crack these to get some free resources. Um, the other cards are Disable and Sigil of Solace Red, at least, which is playable. But uh, I think Bark Bone Strapping is still a solid chess piece for uh, Brutes now that they banned the um, Heart and Cross Wrap in Blitz. So, not too bad for our first two packs. I got four more packs here that we'll open up between the other rounds. 
Like I said, guys, it's just three rounds tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we only had eight players, but an even eight. So it's going to be three rounds, cut to standings. So we'll stream one more round, and then we'll stream whoever's at the top table for the uh, Yoji promo. But, uh, yeah, it should be fun. we got Halloween coming up, too, which is very nice. It's kind of a shame that it's on a Monday night, though. Not the most fun date that people want to uh, imagine spending their Halloweens on. When they have to worry about work or school the next day. So it's, uh, hopefully it's at least not raining for people who want to go out and do something. At the very least. You never know with Florida. You could probably bet on rain, though, and uh, <laughs> it, the odds would be in your favor. But, uh, yeah, I mentioned that I was looking forward to Rock, so, um, anyone else looking forward to any other cards? Actually, did you guys see that, uh, new card that was, uh, revealed just a little while ago for the Assassin Regicide. Now that is a really cool card. Whether it'll actually see play or not, that card is amazing in terms of its artwork and the fact that it kind of spoils what the next hero is. Yeah, that teaser was awesome. And especially the promo one. The difference between the promo and the uh, regular, not just being the full art version, but the promo actually being like darker and more like ominous. That thing looks amazing. Like, I need to get at least one of those for my character, for when I play it, if I play it. But Regicide in the promo version is just, like, ten times better for having that dark lighting rather than the brightly lit regular one. And, uh, and for those who didn't notice, I know I've said it, like, a hundred times in the chat right now, um, that promo, or the character that's shown on it, is definitely the assassin that we see on Vipox from Uprising. So uh, maybe he'll actually have some synergy with Vipox. Get your foils now. Get your Vipox foiled out now. Um, or maybe it just has nothing to do with it and just happens to show the character on it. I think he's a cool looking character from an aesthetic standpoint. Hopefully he has gameplay as an assassin that kind of coincides with what Vipox tries to do. Uh, let me look at what his name is real quick. I know it began with an A2. Mm. His name is Arachne. I think yeah, that quote is, uh, Arachne's quote is on Vipox as well. So it kind of sounds spider-like uh, in terms of like, uh, you know, how it sounds in English at least. Arachne, that sounds cool. It actually says, uh, oh no, actually, the, whatever the quote is that's on Vipox, it says, quote from the spider. So maybe that's just another name for him or a nickname for him. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what his actual hero ability is and whether or not we get more assassin cards or whether he'll be kind of like Merchant where we don't get support for him directly just yet. Um, and he's more of just played for that one assassin card and then maybe played with generics with his ability. What do you guys think it'll be? Do you think he'll be like a talented generic? Maybe he'll just be draconic hero. Like not even like... Uh, generic just draconic so he can use draconic cards but he can't use um like he doesn't have any other class cards that he can use that would be interesting a little disappointing on the assassin side um or maybe he'll just be an assassin but assassin won't have like any specializations to go with it it'll be cool though once we see the actual spoiler I'm going to bet that we see the spoiler on Sunday from DM Armada because DM Armada gets just like he's a standalone spoiler and we just got this preview card that already spoils the name so i feel like it's sunday is when we're gonna find out more about this character but that's just my guess that's just a feeling <laughs> yeah i hope you guys are having a good night this is gonna be just kind of a brief and chill armory here but a as always, an uh, interesting one, as much as uh, we see with the variety of characters we have here tonight. We've got a Briar, Fi, a Viserai, uh, at least one Guardian. We, we got Jamie on his uh, good old Bravo, as always. Uh, we've got a Oldham. I, I, we have an Icelander. So already we have six different characters. What were the other two? What were the other two? Uh, so we got two Viserais. I just remember the other one. Uh, two Viserais, and who was the last hero we have? Dorinthia. Okay, so yeah, we've got seven different heroes, two Viscerize, but we've got a nice spread of heroes tonight. So I'm going to try and make sure we get two of the different ones on a stream next. 
Nick is playing Axis Dorinthia tonight, which is interesting. But uh, I think Axis Dorinthia is uh, still a very viable way to play her instead of the usual Saber build. I don't know what James's opinion is on that as a fellow Dorinthia player. What do you think? You think uh, you think you might ever play Axis Dorinthia, James? I think it's cool just because I like Axis as a weapon, which is why I thought that the new one for uh, up, or Dynasties when it was spoiled was like one of the coolest things for me to possibly play Warrior. But uh, it's just not the same as like a Berserker with an axe. You know, a Warrior with an axe is one thing, but Berserker. I need someone with like a giant giant just executioner's axe that he just swing around the battlefield like a madman that's that's my favorite kind of axe dual axes are cool too but i think that the ones that bolton have are a little too tame in my opinion mm. a little too tame a little too clean not wild enough if we get a brute that gets axes down the line that would be that would be very satisfying for me um but yeah i think i'm i'm Based on the weapons that we've seen so far in general, I think it's kind of cool that we have some spoilers or things to think about with, like, what's an aim counter, why is the malicious uh, battle axe so expensive for its damage, and uh, how it can utilize its ability. Plus, we've got the new gun for mech. All these are, like, I think that it was uh, the best for them to reveal those first to give us some time to talk about what these mean or what this could mean in terms of what we get for the characters. Because then as soon as we start getting the spoilers next week, and we're going to get a lot, we're finally going to have some answers, but not everything is going to be spoiled before the set actually comes out. So, I'm looking forward to see what we get. I am very interested in seeing what aim counters are, to see if it finally makes Azalea playable, or, sorry, not playable, she's playable. More consistent, or consistent enough to be played at, like, top tables regularly. That's, that's what she's missing right there, consistent. But, uh, yeah, I think we're getting started with round two soon, so I'll be right back, guys. Just hang tight, and we'll be starting with the second round in just a little bit. See you soon.
welcome back guys i did say the second round was coming soon uh they're only just now sitting down so we've got a few minutes before the game actually match actually starts here but uh oh hang on this is not nick what am i doing what am i doing okay so evan's on that side all right so this is sean oh, i was hoping to get nick on because i thought he was playing dorenthia but apparently he's playing icelander tonight instead, because after he lost in practice rounds before this, he didn't feel like it was good. <laughs> I guess that's just his opinion. I think Axe's Dorinthia is just fine. He... I mean, sure, it's just threatening damage, but you can do a lot of damage with it, I think. Anyway, so yeah, we've got Evan on the left here playing Oldham, and then we've got Sean on the right playing Oldham. So just to make sure that we don't have any time between rounds, we decided to go ahead and cast the round that'll go to time. <laughs> well, I think these two players are experienced enough to where this won't drag on that long, but it definitely will probably be the last match still playing when uh, all is said and done, so make sure we have no dead space in between. Might just open packs in between the rounds and make sure we don't have, uh, or we have something interesting coming up sometimes. Besides just uh, hammer swing, crown, hammer swing, crown. So right now, this is um, AJ and uh, Nick are the other 1 and O's right now. So all of the players, uh, so it's Nick, Evan, Sean, and AJ that are 1 and O right now. Uh, and since we're only doing three rounds, these are the uh, four players that have the highest chance of actually getting to the finals to play for standings to get that Yoji promo. I believe we will only have one 3-0 by the end of this since we have eight even players. But yeah, Evan has uh, usually been an avid Viscerai player, but it looks like he's switching to Olden now for the foreseeable future until something new comes out in Dynasties. Um, Evan's always found that Olden is a very solid and uh, very uh, meticulous, or had a meticulous play style. Uh, some might say straightforward. Not going to argue with that too much when it comes to how you just use the crown most turns, but Guardian, st and Guardian and especially a talented Guardian still have a lot of more dimensions to play with than, uh, say, just your basic Guardian or just uh, Welcome to Wraith Heroes, for example. And uh, compared to Viscerai, I think he feels a lot less frustration from having um, a lot less of a chance to have dead hands like you can with Viscerai still, like, uh, I guess you could say an all-non-attack or all-attack action hand. And uh, this way he feels like he has more of a... more options to play or more of a sense of control to play throughout the game without having to worry about hands like that. And then Sean. Sean's been putting in the rounds since, uh, I think since uh, Uprising came out to keep playing Oldham. He did play Icelander, I believe, for a while, uh, but Oldham is kind of where he settled in, playing the Ice card with better control options, and uh, I guess you could say kind of, a, kind of the style where you want to get those big hits off with some disruption effects. There's something that attracts people to it. Even I played Guardian for a little while back in the day when Crucible came out and some of those new cards came out. I do try and get Valda to work every now and then for Blitz, but I still haven't figured out how to optimize her compared to the current Guardians, so for now we'll just stick with uh, Reinar, personally. Alright, looks like we're getting started. I did not see who won the die roll or what the die roll was. No, put it back on the table. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. Um, I believe... Yes, Oldemir. We're making sure that we have no uh, time between the rounds. This will be the last round that plays and then immediately goes into round three. So uh, no waiting time here, guys. We'll be commentating on this for maybe 30 minutes or more. No, but like I said, uh, Evan and Sean both have been playing Olden for a while now. So they definitely know how to make it so this won't drag on too long. Looks like uh, Sean is going first. Opting to just get some cards out with the hammer swing so he can arsenal something and pass into the next turn. <laughs> yes, no no waiting in between rounds. Although I will probably open some packs between the round while they're playing. Just because uh, we might have some time where they're either making decisions or it's getting to a somewhat repetitive point with hammer swings. You know what? what? Oh, and... Uh, I'm not expecting to get anything too crazy out of this Crucible pack, because apparently AJ got one of these bundles and got an Arknight shard out of his pack, so... 
<laughs> Lemon juice and resting my voice. No, I've drunken my coffee and uh, dehydrated myself. So I will not be resting my voice or healing it in any way, shape, or form. Ah, but we are going to stay awake tonight, boys. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and open this Crucible of War pack at least while we are getting started. Because it looks like we're going in with just a choke slam from Evan just to get his first turn going. Uh, choke slam doesn't really do much against Oldham. The most it would affect is Oakenold. Um, but you know, usually unless you dominate in some way, uh, you just block out the damage because you just don't want to take that free hit. And it looks like this pack was semi-fruitful as well. We got a snag as our majestic. So, so far... We've gotten a Super and a Majestic out of three out of our six packs so far. And a Foil Snapback Red, which is pretty nice. Too bad it's banned in, uh, uh, what is it called? Blitz? I think that's fair, though, I guess. Wizard is kind of, kind of crazy when you only have 20 health to worry about and Arcane Chunks coming at you. So, yeah, we've got a, uh, Foil... Foil chains of eminence, a snag, and then a foil equipment from uh, Welcome to Wraith. So, kind of cool so far. We've got three packs left, Everfest and two Uprisings. So, hopefully we get something spicy out of those packs. Now, everyone I've talked to, every Guardian main that I've talked to, Jamie, Evan, Sean, everyone says that in the Oldham Mirror, you just have to play the Hammer, the um, Sledge of Ambleheim, because if you don't, it could get to a point where with just four damage, you just lock each other into an infinite loop using uh, Oldham's defense reaction and the crown plus shield. So um, I don't know if this is the play, though. I feel like Anathos might still be the play, because at least you have the option to just pitch one card to swing for four or try and get two cards on the field to swing for six. Um, I guess it's because they don't play enough three costs and they have nothing to pitch into that would just cost the one unless they switch to the tectonic plating to get the first card there. I don't know. I still disagree. Maybe that's why I'm not a Guardian player right now, but uh, I'd still pr probably opt for the Anathos instead of the... probably the, uh, the Sledge of Ambleheim. Got the pummel on there, just coming in for some extra damage. Evan opting to, opting to use the defense reaction from Oldham to go ahead and reduce a bit of that, but uh, Sean coming in with a bit of a chunk to put himself in the a very small lead. Did I break even? I don't know if I've broken even on these uh, this mystery bundle so far. I don't think Chains of Eminence are sna or Snag are worth much right now. Uh, Snag is definitely, like, an interesting card. I think people forget that Snag it would actually be kind of funny to use against characters like Fi or Guardian. It removes the extra damage that Guardian would get on their Pummels, and it does remove the extra damage that Fi gets from, um, their Phoenix Flames. So all their Phoenix Flames would hit for zero on a turn if they, if they decide to Snag. Uh, and Rouse the Ancients, too. It would make it Rouse the Ancients come in for zero, uh, if you play Snag against Guardian, so... It's not like it's a completely useless card against this matchup. I might even try subbing it in on my Reinar deck for the sideboard against them. It's at least a blue pitch. It does suck that it doesn't block otherwise, though. But imagine taking 7 damage off the Guardian's turn just by using Snag. 7 damage with 1 card. That's a, that's a pretty good exchange, in my opinion. Endless Winter is a very interesting card against the Olden, especially in the Mirror, because if you confuse it, either they block out and then they have to pay an exorbitant amount to even attack with the Sludge of Ambleheim next turn, or it hits... Actually, if it hits, it doesn't do too much, because once you swing with the Sledge, you don't really do anything after, so the Frostbites after that don't matter too much. Ooh, Evan getting the Olkenode Fuse... Now, this is actually harder to get off these days, just a little bit since they banned the Pulse of Isenloft, but uh, in the mirror, especially when Sean doesn't have an Arsenal card right now, this is a very powerful play. Sean is either going to block with one card to reduce some damage and lose two, and possibly just Arsenal on his turn, or he's going to go ahead and take all the damage to at least swing... He can't even swing... Yep, this is another situation where he can't even swing the hammer because he doesn't have the Tuna counter up. Um... He can't even swing the hammer if he decides to just take the hits to uh, lose the two cards only. Okay, looks like he's opting to block as much damage as he can. He might have a defense reaction in his hands, like staunch response, to go ahead and block this entirely. Mm, 
Not entirely. He's blocking seven to nine. So he is taking two damage and he's just going to lose both the cards. Okay, so he's just looking to mitigate as much damage as he can during these dominated turns and uh, he'll come back with a full hand later. Not a bad play. Evan's still on kind of, you could say, on the lower health right now, but he does have the momentum right now, having a card in Arsenal and a full hand. And another Okanold. Okay. <laughs> See, that's the thing you really have to worry about when... Uh, Oh, hey, we got a uh, gifted a sub to Brandalorian. Oh, thank you, James. It's very kind of you. So thank you, James, for gifting the sub. And um, Brandalorian, you get a free sub or a gifted sub. I'll be honest, I don't watch Twitch all that much, so I don't know what that does, but I'm going to guess it's a nice thing. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I'll, fi I'll, I'll, I'll figure out what it does later, or I'll ask AJ. Oh, and he pummels it too? I looked away for two seconds, and Evan pummels the Okanold. That is nasty right there. Alright, so with all that momentum, Evan probably takes... What? Did he only lose one health? That's wild, if that's the case. You know what? Brandel... Uh, sorry, Sean might have had a uh, staunch response that I didn't see. I looked away for two seconds, and I missed that entire play, but... That's the momentum I'm talking about. Letting Guardian have momentum, especially when uh, they don't have the pulse anymore, but can keep the two cards they fused in hand. You can get, you can still get consecutive um, Oakenold fuses off against the other player and just keep chipping in with uh, dominated damage. Although from the looks of it, Sean hasn't taken much damage at all from any of these plays, so I guess he's still just fine to wait until he burns through all of them. And a Spinal Crush coming in for nine. Again, I don't think this is going to do too much in terms of its crush effect, but since it's not dominated, Sean can just go ahead and block out and then retaliate with Hammer. Because he's got the Tuna counter now, so that's good. But yeah, the recent changes to banning the Pulse of Eisenloft just reduces consistency just a little bit. I think it was a fair ban, because it doesn't like destroy Oldham, uh, but it does make it so he's a little less likely to get those back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back, uh, old fuses off. It does kind of... Uh, it is kind of a shame, though. Those cards are kind of cool in that they're the only dual, dual element cards that you can play, and their effects is synergize with what the hero or class that it's made with normally do. But when you go ahead and ban it, then... I mean, the only hero who could have used it can't even use it, and it's just like, it feels kind of bad that you lose a card with such good theming and uh, design behind it, just because there's this one interaction that just makes it that much more noise annoying in the uh, overall meta. Ooh, Evan coming in with the uh, Endless Winter. Hmm. Actually... I actually don't know about this play over just swinging the hammer. It's not like it's really going to bug him that much, or uh, bug Sean that much, minus the two extra damage. Without the fusion effect on top of it. And then you'd be able to save the card, or maybe have been able to block a different way last turn. Yeah, he's going to take one, but that's not really a big deal. He's probably just going to swing hammer anyway. Sean's been going a lot of turns without Arsenal, which is usually not what you want to do with old in this, even in the mirror. Uh, so you can keep those crowns of seeds up, but I don't think it's killing him either to not have that one extra card to block with, so this should be fine. Yeah, honestly, it's hard to say what, uh, how the mirror is optimized or how you should play the mirror optimally. They also could have different builds, for all we know, just slightly, so that uh, their end game or their game plan might be different. But uh, I dropped playing Oldham when he became uh, less interesting to play a while ago. Uh, and uh, I'm especially glad that I don't play him in the mirror, because I feel like that's just a slog that I don't want to go through. Playing Brute is way more fun against Oldham, in my opinion. My humble opinion. But uh, we'll see. By the way, I believe this is the last week that we have the Yoji Armory kit. So next Armory event that we have is probably... It might be next week, but I know that next week is Nationals. Sorry, Worlds. Uh, so we won't be having a stream. 
Uh, we will be at Worlds ourselves, but uh, the Haven might have an armory anyway for the players who st stick around or who couldn't make it out, which there are quite a few. Uh, unfortunately, we would like to see more of our friends come with us on the trip, but we know that not everyone has the same situation to go ahead and do that. And this, this is a wild play. Okay, so Evan's using the Expose the Elements uh, in response to the attack that uh, uh, Sean just did to get rid of the Tunic, which has a huge swing in advantage, or a huge swing in momentum. Uh, Worlds is this upcoming week, not this weekend, but next weekend, uh, the 4th through the 6th. But uh, this is a huge momentum swing in Evan's favor, because without that Tunic counter, there are less chances for uh, Sean to be able to just swing... Well, I mean, there's going to be no more chances for Sean to be able to swing the hammer with one pitch card from hand. Every time he wants to use the hammer now, he's going to have to give up two cards or keep two cards in hand to use it. So that is... Normally, most people might have tried targeting the seeds, but as you might have noticed, like, Sean hasn't been able to arsenal cards to swing hammer for a long time now. Uh, so banning, getting rid of the tunic first, I think, was the better play for uh, Evan here. Yeah, alright, so this game, I think in the long run, Evan's got this game now with just that play. Because every turn, every turn that they keep pitching two to swing with the hammer, I feel like in the long run, Evan's going to be able to save a card to go ahead and keep advantage, or has more of a chance to. Ooh, like just taking six right now. And uh, he's going to have some nasty play with Pummel probably to make it so that uh, <laughs> Sean is going to lose a lot here. I disagree with uh, using uh, Command and Conquer here. I know it makes it so he can't use defense reactions, but I think the Frostfang... No, the Frostfang is blue, so he wouldn't have been able to do it there. Yeah, Evan just obviously threatening the Pummel with the extra Tunic counter here. And uh, I think I think Sean knows. He luckily doesn't have an arsenal to lose, but he's definitely going to have to discard an extra card for hand, which is unfortunate. Yep, here it comes. Pummel for... What is that color? That's red. Pummel for four more. And the best that uh, Sean can do is uh, pitch for Oldham's ability to mitigate more damage possibly. But either way, he's going to discard a card if he does. And then he won't be able to swing Hammer at all. Yep, he's just going to opt to give up the card. And still be able to swing for damage next turn. And it feels like every time they make a play like Oakenold, Command and Conquer, or Pummel... Feels like they still only chip in like a few damage, which is wild in my opinion. But that's the Guardian Mirror for you, especially the Oldham. I'll be honest, James, I don't think Guardian is ever going to get uh, boots. Because that has to do with action points. I, I don't think Guardian... Like, let's put it this way. In terms of what Guardian would consider, like, an action point given card, I think time, the, the time skippers is already it. You pitch a blue, you pay three resources to just gain an extra action point. Uh, or gain two action points, because it counts as an action itself. Um, so, honestly, I don't think Guardian... I don't think there's anything that would synergize with a Guardian card to give them extra action points ahead of time. Uh, or work with action points in that way, because all of their guardian cards are super expensive cards. So at most, you just won't be able to swing multiple times with something. Like, I know Sledge of Anvilheim is uh, a funny card in that technically you can swing with it multiple times a turn if you have the action points and resources. But I think Time Skipper is just, in terms of a guardian-specific uh, card that has to deal with action points, I think it just does everything that it would do anyway. Ooh! Looks like Sean here is firing back with his own, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Expose the elements, but because uh, Evan had the arsenal card and one resource floating, he was able to activate it in response and pay the two to prevent the equipment from being destroyed. Which is unfortunate, because that would have been, it would have been insane, because, uh, actually no, Evan's been making good use of Crown of Seeds, so I think that would have been great if Sean could have taken it away from him. But uh, unfortunately not able to. If Evan had drawn a red card, though, it would have been the best case scenario for Sean to get rid of it now. Yeah, it is a surprisingly great back and forth match. Both of them definitely know what they're doing on Oldham. So that's part of what helps this out. So it's not just a slow slog back and forth. But 
it seems like every every time one of them tries to take advantage with one play it only does like a bit of damage and then just gets like evened out immediately like the next turn the most play that we've had where it was like very one-sided was the back-to-back -back oaken old turns from evan and uh, unfortunately that was a while ago and since we haven't seen it since i don't think that uh we'll be seeing anything that crazy back-to-back -back again this game probably not anyway while we're getting oh while we ha kind of have a pause in the match with just some hammer swings i'm gonna go ahead and open up this everfest pack let's see what we got in this uh bundle here oh i saw an arcane lantern for a second and it was just the regular one uh, nothing good in here just a foil ride the tailwind yellow technically good in benji technically a good benji card but nothing wild otherwise. And a Thunderquake is our uh, backmost card. So all we have less left is two Uprising packs to open. But uh, yeah, for anyone just joining, I see we've got a few more viewers. This is our weekly armor event here at the Haven. Uh, we have three rounds tonight since we have eight players cut to standings. We are playing for the final Yoji that we have in our armory kit here. Next time we'll be featuring the Quicksilver Dagger. And appreciate them hosting the, or letting us host these events. And uh, we would appreciate it if you could show them some support there. Like I said, the packs that I'm opening right now are from a special bundle. It's a six pack mystery bundle that does include some Monarch first and a box of Crucible first split between the product. So if you order it for $20, you get six mystery packs from uh, anywhere from uh, Welcome to Wraith to Uprising. And like I said, it includes the chance of getting some Crucible first and uh, Monarch first in them. But a very cool, uh, very cool uh, bundle pack or uh, mystery pack in my opinion. What kind of effect do you think the mech arms equip could have? So, arm equipment always has to do with damage. I feel like if you were to do something with that, what would it be? Hmm. Maybe activate it to banish the top two cards of your deck, uh, and if they're two mech cards, plus two for each mech card banished? For a plus four on the next attack that you boost? Something like that, maybe. Um, or maybe you crack it as an instant or reaction to be like, oh, for as many times as you boosted this combat chain, it gets plus X, maybe? Those are the only things I could see. So, when it comes to Mechnologist, even with, like, Data Doll, it has to do with boosting in some way or banishing. So I feel like it would synergize some way, in, or somehow uh, in that regard. Or maybe you crack it to get plus one on the weapon swing, for all we know, as a reaction, or uh, ahead of time. So that the uh, new gun swings for six and uh, tries to threaten someone with like powder keg or something. That would be cool. But uh, that's the most I can come up with just off the top of my head. The thing is with these supplemental sets is sometimes they introduce new mechanics for each class, even if it's just a one-off, like uh, Heave has been so far, uh, or like the aim counters that they've mentioned on the Ranger Bow. So we might even get a, like a new term besides boost that uh, Dash gets or Mechnologist gets that would synergize better with the gloves that we'd be thinking about. Yo, okay, so we've got seven on the Sledge of Ambleheim with the Terra Sunder. Now this is nasty because uh, although, yeah, because uh, Sean doesn't even have uh, something in Arsenal to use the crown on, but he does have the Staunch, okay. So Staunch does block all the damage and make it so that not only does he just not lose two cards for free, he does get to block all that damage with a single card. So this match is going to continue. Unfortunately, because uh, Sean does not have the... Oh, and the fact that Evan was able to pay for all that through the channel, that's kind of wild. But Sean is going to finally have to Arsenal because he doesn't have the Tunic to counter, tunic counter anymore. He does not have the ability to uh, just uh, pitch one card with the Tunic resource to help. This is pretty obviously... Yeah, I think I see the pummel in his hand. It's always the mind games that you have to go up against with the Guardians here, especially in our locals. You got Jamie, Evan, and Sean here always, like, threatening the pummel. Or always, like, uh, trying to bluff the pummel. Uh, Sean's gonna go ahead and... Yep, there it comes. Yep, there's the pummel. At least he doesn't have two, right? 
But uh, Sean, unfortunately, losing the card in his arsenal. It looks like it was just a Toke Slam, so nothing crazy. Um, wait, why didn't he activate the crown? He could have activated the crown in response to the pummel to reduce the damage and save the card. Maybe he didn't think of it, or maybe he didn't want the other card to get discarded from the pummel damage. But, yeah, he could have activated in response to that. And another Command and Conquer. Evan, stop. This is gross. This is abuse. This is against the Geneva Convention, and if it's not, I'll submit it in the next Accords or the next <laughs> the next proposal. Um, but yeah, Sean could have actually crowned a Seeds there to go ahead and save the card in Arsenal and reduce one extra damage from the Pummel. And here comes the Pummel. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Sean is taking a lot of extra damage from all these back-to-back -back Pummels, and he's down to two health. Now, the good news is that... Evan has used a lot of pummels already, so he should be kind of, like, getting close to out of pummels this time. So unless he has a, an attack that he can dominate, I think that Sean should be kind of in the clear when it comes to the pummels. Although I see a blizzard in his hand, which is not great because it can't block, so he needs to probably block with the three other cards in hand, and then just arsenal the blizzard so he can crown the seeds later. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for Sean. Taking back-to-back -back Command and Conquerors with pummel, that's just the... Oh, that's the nastiest thing I can really think about in Flesh and Blood, to be honest. The only thing nastier is, like, Command and Conquer on, like, two Channel Mount Heroics from Briar or something like that. Or Oldham, technically. Oldham can play Channel. He just can't go... He just can't go crazy like uh, Briar can on it. Oh, and it looks like this might be game... Unless Sean got the staunch response, or uh, can get the staunch response off of, like, the crown... This is a dominated uh, Glacial Footsteps that's coming in for a full 8 damage here. But he, yep, he's got the staunch. Oh my god, he keeps having it. That's crazy. Every time that Evan wants to come with a dominated attack that's not... Or a uh, crazy attack that's not Command and Conquer, Sean has had the uh, staunch response to boost through... Or uh, to uh, pump through it. Which is, frankly, like the best... And another back-to-back -back Glacial Footsteps. So does Sean have another staunch response? Maybe. He's running really thin on his deck there, actually. So the Crown of Seeds might be able to get him there. Does it get him there? Is it there? Nope. Unfortunately, that is game. And Evan will take the, pr uh, take the round here. So whoever wins between Nick and AJ is going to be playing Evan next in the finals here. GG. That was a... Great back and forth, better than I was expecting for just the Olden Mirror, but eventually it got to a point where those Command and Conquer Pummels really, really uh, increased the gap between their health there. 19-2 to two there at the end before the final turn, so yeah, good games to both players. Uh, Evan is going to be moving on to the finals, and seeing who is, uh, we'll see soon who he's going to be playing up against for the final Yoji promo here. Hey, welcome back. Ooh, hello? Camera. Hello? Camera? Alright, well, more technical difficulties. I like it. Just freeze frame on my face right there. Um, we'll go ahead and just uh, go to the Be Right Back Here screen. Uh, and I'll go ahead and change the announcement here. We might actually just be going right into this. Here we go. Final ring. No, we want an exclamation point. Round? Ah, I'll, get, I'll get my typing in order on this computer someday. There we go. Final round. Yeah, we are going to the final round soon, guys. I mean, I assume that was the longest match, so everyone else should be done. But I will be back in just a second to confirm and make sure that we've got Evan and the winner of Nick and AJ's match on screen next. So stick around, and we'll be right back.
welcome back. Let's see. No, the camera's still frozen. Okay, so we're gonna leave that. Uh, we're just gonna leave it on this screen while I talk with you guys. All right, so we are about to go into the final round. Oddly enough, the Oldham Mirror was the first round to finish. Um, everyone else is only just now wrapping it up. We do have our top two for the playing for the Yoji tonight. It is going to be Nick on Icelander and Evan on Oldham. So we're gonna have the Ice Mirror. But uh, this time we at least get to see two different heroes. And they're going to be, like I said, it's going to be, since we only have three rounds, both of them are 2-0, but only one can be 3-0 tonight to get that uh, very coveted promo. Um, we only just finished this round, so they should be splitting up. Ah, oh, boy. How do I do this on the YouTube thing? Hang on one second, guys. All right, let's see if I can fix this real quick. Uh, by the way, do not do not uh, like um, the <laughs> do not follow the link that uh, I believe that's in the YouTube chat that people are seeing that. Where is the mod here? Where's the Twitch chat area? Sorry guys, AJ is the one who usually does this, so he knows how to do all of the things. Uh, I'll figure it out when he gets here anyway. But while we're waiting, I guess we'll go ahead while they're setting up for the final round as well. I'm going to go ahead and open up these two Uprising packs. See if I get something spicy. Alright, nothing in the Majestic slot. Ooh, we got a Cold Foil Ash. Just the regular Ash. Just the regular. But a Cold Foil Ash nonetheless. That's pretty nice. Oh, that's pretty nice. I do, I do of course, prefer the uh, Super Cold Foil Ash. The Marvel Cold Foil Ash. But I'll still take the regular one for now, since I traded away all the ones I have, I believe. And these things shot up in price all of a sudden when they told people that they had to play all of the ash underneath each of their dragons. So, uh, yeah. Hey, Evan, do you know how to get rid of this mod, this uh, stupid chat stuff here? Do you know where's the mod view? I don't know. That's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's on the regular chat. That's the. Press multi stream. I did click multi stream. It didn't do nothing. Make sure you leave it open and maybe on auto flag, but I think it's have it open on multi stream the entire time just so that if you post it again you can remove it. I yeah, think. it's possible. But it won't load it won't load the multi stream stuff unless you have the chat open for it. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, either way, AJ will come back or maybe we'll just ignore it like uh, normal people. Um, went ahead and opened the final pack here. We got a foil red hot and nothing else unfortunately. So. Out of the six rando packs that we got here, we got Cold Foil, Aether Ashwing, uh, Snag, Foil Chains of Eminence, and a Foil Bark Bone. So, oddly enough, I think the Cold Foil Ashwing actually just kind of made the value for, for the uh, pack itself at only $20. How much is Aether Ashwing going for now? Cold Foil? I don't know. Not Marvel? I'm gonna check real quick, just for the funsies. Yo, this for me? Okay. No foil beast within for me? Dude, I thought we were best friends. You're my dog, I do that. I I'm, so, I'm sorry, did you call me a dog? Are you calling me a dog? My dog, Ryan. Love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you got to enjoy that stream match. Uh, it actually was more interesting than we were expecting, to be honest. How many old mirrors are boring? <laughs> <laughs> no, when they're played by people who at least know how to play. Alright, let's see how much. Cold foil, not the marble foil. Doo -doo -doo. 
Uh, cold foil's sitting at about $15 right now, so yeah, I'll, I'll say that's uh, getting your money's worth for the $20 six-pack extravaganza. Basically, when you're buying packs these days, you're never going to get the full value unless you happen to pull. So you're basically pull exactly what you're looking for or happen to pull that super rare card. So you're basically just playing the lottery. Uh, so, um, you know, if I only spend a couple dollars each week just to try my luck, that's not, that's not a bad thing. Of course, as soon as the next new set comes out, like when Dynasty comes out, you're going to have, like, what, like three cases to open? What's going on with the ads? Yeah, unfortunately, that's just spam coming in. Unfortunately, since it's on YouTube, I don't know how to remove them right now. I'm going to have to wait for AJ to see if he has a break to come back here and remove them. Uh, I would just ignore them. Uh, like, uh, don't don't click on those links. Don't don't like photo here. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing good for you there, I promise. But uh, we're getting ready to start the next round suit. In fact, let me see what we got on the live scene here. Nah, they're not setting up just yet, but it is Evan versus uh, Nick here. Icelander versus Oldham for our final match. So I'm going to change the name here. Uh, we got Nick Nick Murphy. Nick Schmurphy coming in. Trying to get that Yoji. Yes, fab is all you need. Stay tuned. Don't, 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 don't get distracted by the link there. Only pay attention to the stream. I think the stream chat is also kind of stretched because I thought it was. No, this. Oh uh, yeah, it was kind of stretched. That's kind of funny. Just trying to adjust the size of things, and I didn't know that if I hit the shift button, it would actually stretch the chat itself. So, but you know, it's fine. All right, looks like they're finally setting up here. Sean moving his mat and politely moving off to his uh, final round somewhere else. And like I said, we've got Evan versus Nick. Icelander versus Oldham. This is another match that might take a while just because of the nature of Ice versus Ice. Um, but since this is the final week of our Yoji kit, we also should be giving out the mats tonight to uh, whatever the store deems is our... Um, what is it called? What is it called? Uh, store champion... And, uh, wow, I cannot believe, I'm forget. I'm blanking oh, yeah. on the name of what you call the, uh, yeah. person you vote for, for, um, one of the mats. It's like, uh, I guess it is just your store champion, or, oh my gosh, if someone remembers in the chat real quick to remind me, that would help, but, uh, yeah, we should be giving out those mats, and then, like I said, next week we should be starting on the new kit with the Quicksilver Dagger. I do really like the Lanterns mat, uh, that new Illusionist card, that's a mat in the new kit. That is a really nice mat that I kind of want a chance to win, honestly. People's Champion, yes, thank you. Yeah, so we are going to figure out who our, pe or we are going to find out who our People's Champion is this week. But uh, not until we finish this final match here, so stay tuned. Now, Evan and Nick definitely know, or have definitely been playing the game a long time, though Nick is very new to Icelander, so if you guys see him make any, what you would consider misplays, just remember, this is like his first time playing it at an Armory event now, even though he's already blinged it out with the Marvel Icelander and everything. I think he pulled that during his, or in his own packs, though, so it's not surprising that he still has it. are getting set up i will remind people that uh, if you're just tuning in and i have ha and you haven't heard it say me you haven't heard me say it tonight uh don't forget to check out the haventabletop.com for all your flesh and blood singles use the code team acg to go ahead and get 10 percent off your uh, fab single orders and uh yeah support the store they're really nice for uh, having this set up for us and uh, letting us do this every week Good friends of the store, good friends of the game. Keeping the local community alive during hard times. To be honest, though, now that uh, not everything's done with uh, the closures and lockdowns and everything, at least uh, as much as they're, as little as there were here in Florida, uh, it's nice to make sure or see that uh, even new stores like this one can have a nice, healthy flat, flesh and blood scene with the game still powering on. Just gonna go ahead and 
try and quietly pocket this uh, ash ring I pulled. Okay, let's, let's see if I can... So yeah, I brought this up earlier for anyone who wasn't here in the chat, but uh, I'm hoping, or I'm guessing, that DM Armada, since we just got that new spoiler for Regicide, that mentions the new hero's name and even shows him in the picture, I think that we're going to get a, the spoiler for that hero on Sunday, which is DM Armada's spoiler. Um, he's the only spoiler for that day, and since he is a long-term supporter and even commentator during major events for Flesh and Blood, I feel like they would give him like the new hero, the new class, and just reveal it there, because we already know that it's Assassin now. Um, whether or not it gets as much support as a regular class in the set, or whether it's more of like a merchant where it doesn't get like class-specific cards, um, but kind of has something cool to play with for the, for the future, I think Dio Marmada is going to spoil it. So we only have to wait. Uh, what is it? Two more days? Two more days until we see what this new hero is going to be? God, I can't wait, though. I want to see what it looks like, and I want to see what he does. Like, we've already seen Regicide, which is an absolutely wild, like, just single card. Of course, the wildness of it kind of scales more with how royal or how many royal heroes are actually played, or how often the royal talent comes into, a, uh, comes into play. But I think it's just cool that there's a card that, that that's just that heavy-handed with uh, a win-or-lose scenario. And, uh... That interacts with what we've seen only one character have innately right now, who's also on the card, dead. Uh, if you didn't tune into our live broadcast on Wednesday with James and AJ, uh, they actually guessed that the reason why Emperor is only a young hero is possibly because he gets assassinated. And here we are a couple days later seeing him assassinated on Regicide. So, uh, good prediction by them. Very good. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I hope we see something interesting with it, because I like the idea of the assassin class being the guy who looks like he's on the card for Vipox, and uh, seeing if he has any synergy with that cards or other cards that maybe have gone unnoticed so far. That would be cool. Looks like, uh, now getting back to the actual game, which I've neglected to... Wait, turn one, fighting spirit? Yeah, best play for Icelander, honestly, to go ahead and uh, arsenal a card that you want and get a bit of health back that you didn't have before. Uh, honestly, optimal play. But uh, that's kind of surprisingly how the Icelander... Like, people in the beginning when Icelander didn't have all the ice cards to play with, like the ice wizard cards... They almost played her like a uh, semi-battle wizard with uh, cards like E-Strike, Command and Conquer, Cadaverous Contraband, and some other like uh, just regular attacks. Because she didn't have like the spells that she could play at instant speed like Kano did that would uh, really synergize with her playstyle besides like Channel Lake Frigid and stuff that just acted as disruption. But now we have, uh, even though we have like actual Ice Wizard cards and everything, she still seems to play or has a... Uh, kind of uh, gone back to playing more of the style of a battle mage where she has a lot of attacks that she can take advantage of their bonus effects for because she starts at a lower health uh, lower health pool. Wounded Bull and uh, Findle's Fighting Spirit being the two star cards there. All right, and Evan coming in with that nasty Oakenold, so even if Nick responds here, he's still going to just, like, take nine to the face and lose whatever cards he has left in hand, which will actually hamper his ability to arsenal a card to play on uh, Evan's next turn. So Evan has a really... Or, sorry, Nick has a really important uh, decision to consider is whether or not he tries to defend out or play cards right now, knowing that the other two will go to the bottom, especially at random or whether he just takes the hit to increase the chances that he'll have a card to actually play during Evan's next turn after this. Yeah, sometimes taking the 9 to uh, and losing the cards is the optimal play if you want to at least retain some form of momentum. At the very least, he's not going to worry about, like, uh... Oh, you know what? I'll take back what I was about to just say. He definitely still has to worry about a pummel, because Evan has a card in Arsenal that I didn't see. 
So he could be threatening a pummel with two cards still left in hand to pay for it. Or maybe that's just another Okanold that he'll save for next turn. Everything is possible with Guardian. You just always have to assume the worst. But yeah, like I said, Nick making the tough decision to see if he should uh, play, play cards now or um, see what cards he actually has left in hand to Arsenal for the next turn. I think he still plays whatever he has in Arsenal, at least for now, because Potion's not going to help him on the defense, and it's not really the best card, strongest card to actually Arsenal for uh, the next turn. Oh, okay, so he's using it to pay for the Brothers in Arms. Okay. Oh, and the Gloves. Okay, so he's looking to reduce as much damage and Oasis Respite. Oh, that's actually really good. So not only does uh, Evan not get the ability to actually get the effect of Oakenhold off, but Nick gains a health out of all that, so that's uh, pretty good in my opinion. I don't think Nick has much to do on his turn besides Coronet Peak, although Evan does have the counter, but even if you get the counter off of Oldham, I think that's still worth it. Nick forgetting to Tunic counter up himself. No, oh, no, there he is. It's all right. Nick and Nick and Evan are friends, so they're they're good to, uh, in this nice casual armory event to uh, let each other uh, get the tuna counter up in case they forget. Nick has also been away for a while, so this is his first time coming back in a while to actually play games instead of uh, being on trips or I think he was either on business or on yeah he was on business in uh, another state I think so yeah. Nick's just getting back in the swing of things, so we'll be we'll be forgiving him this time. I don't know how long we'll keep that up, since he keeps flinging out all of his decks like uh, the Marvel Islander and Cold Foil Waning Moon there. If he had the ability to, he'd have a Cold Foil Tunic and uh, Storm Striders there too. <laughs> uh. But uh, Glacial Footsteps coming out from Evan, I don't think he fused it, so this is just 8. But I mean, you don't want to just keep taking life, lo life losses early. Unless you actually have something that you can swing back with uh, Icelander next turn. Or something that you can play that uh, makes it so that after you start trying to gain momentum, you hamper the opponent's momentum. In my opinion. Or just swing big for like 8 damage off a Wounded Bull for just 2 cards. 8 for 2 cards is such a wild number uh, in this game. Especially when it comes from something that's a generic that anyone can play. Oh... Oh, I thought he was about to pummel here. He still could pummel if he draws it off the, uh... If he has two floating... Yeah. Oh, no, he only has one floating resource. Okay. I thought he was about to have two floating resource and was about to pummel this glacial footsteps of all things. That would be wild. Freezing point coming in for a vanilla 5. He didn't even fuse it because it doesn't have the card in hand. And he's saving whatever it is in his arsenal. I wonder if Nick is saving a defense reaction in arsenal to make sure to defend something like an Oakenold or something else that's um, more punishing as damage later that could have dominate. Instead of uh, just using it for the whatever the value could be as a non-attack action on Evan's turn. Honestly, when it comes to playing Wizard against a Guardian, if they only do one thing, then getting Frostbites after the fact doesn't really mean much unless you have the uh, Frost Hexes up. Ooh, Command and Conquer coming down from Evan with two cards in hand to go ahead and try and threaten the Pummel. Ooh, but Nick has the response this time. So the cool thing about playing the response here, <laughs> he's got the Cloister as uh, his Frost Counters. Uh, his frostbite tokens but the cool thing about playing winter's bite in response here is that um it kind of forces or it makes it so that if you can get enough frostbites or the frostbite and any other forms of disruption you can do it before the reaction step so that they can't play uh, like a pummel in response to it however even if uh nick got the uh even if nick got the frostbite and any floating resources Evan still has two cards in hand. Like, we can see what they are. It's not a pummel. But he'd still be able to pitch a blue over the frostbite and uh, pummel over this. Thankfully for Nick, he doesn't have to worry about it this time. Even if he did, I guess he doesn't have to worry about the arsenal being destroyed now that it's gone. 
So Evan probably arsenaling the Oaken Old just to make it so that if he gets the Earth and Ice card, he can go ahead and use it next turn for some uh, for some pretty punishing damage. Oh, but not if uh, not if uh, Nick does this though, because he's going to be able to rip two cards with both the Insidious Chill and the Aether Ice Vein. Because I believe that's a red. Yeah, Evan doesn't get to do it. No Pulse of Eisenloft here to go ahead and give him the free double fuse off a single card. Kind of surprised Evan didn't just go ahead and, like, Tunic or something. Sorry, not Tunic. Uh, Crown of Seeds to try and cycle the card. I also don't super get... Like, I get that his shield is kind of useless, but I don't get using Sledge over just using a single card uh, or using Winter's Veil vale against the Wizard matchup. Again, I'm not a Guardian player, so I believe we have three Guardians here who could explain it to me better. But I feel like against the Wizard, I would still use Winter's Whale vale to threaten the Frostbite in case they want to do anything on their on uh, their own turn. Especially with Icelander, who actually does play cards on her own turn more often than uh, Kano does. I feel like this is the time where you do just kind of take the damage. Ooh, and get the Frostbite token afterwards. You know what's funny? If he really wanted to get rid of it, he doesn't need to because he's got the floating resources for Null Rune. But he could, uh, if he really wanted to, activate the Crown of Seeds to reduce it or cycle the card if he wanted to arsenal something else. I wouldn't, though, if you have an Oaken Old just waiting in arsenal, waiting for that two-card fusion. So Nick actually has a full hand of three cards to do something with, hopefully with fusion so he can get... Oh! Nope, it's just a Wounded Bull. Wounded Bull for eight. God, I love this card. I love that this card is actually played in, like, a really competitive deck now because it's such a Welcome to welcome to Wraith classic card that I never really saw much play outside of, like, draft or sealed formats. But now seeing some actual play in, like, a meta, like, really meta deck for, like, a very... I want to say it's, like, just for... It almost seems unsurprising when you actually look at the card stats, but no one would actually look back onto it if someone didn't give it a try first and actually get it to those, like, uh, higher, um, what's it called? I guess you could say higher tables or um, higher up in tournaments. Because it's such an unassuming card. Like, it's just raw damage. But when you think about the value for the damage you're getting, it is a lot of damage. Alright, so Nick's setting up a potion here. Potion has been an MVP in my Reinar decks lately, by the way. I think not enough people respect the fact that just slapping down a potion for future turns is just insanely valuable, especially in Reinar with Blood Rush, to kind of fix the problems you might have with drawing too many red cards off of it. But yeah, Evan coming in with the Spinal Crush. Spinal Crush is not really that threatening. Because I don't think Nick really does anything to have go again. So it's just about blocking the damage, not necessarily making sure you don't get crushed here. But 9 damage is also still 9 damage, so you don't want to just take that for free. Nick probably going to come in here with the staff. I would, because I feel, feel like the 3 damage you're trying to threaten over, and then arsenaling a card will at least hit for the 2 damage, uh, given that Evan only has 1 left of resource. And still go into your turn, getting ready to arsenal a card for later. Yep. So Nick still has his Storm Striders too for a play in the late game if he needs to, especially with the Frost text there. I do think it's really sad that uh, the uh, what's it called Storm Striders have been banned for uh, Blitz play, especially when we we got our first Warrior Wizard. I can't try to see how combinations work with that, because now uh, the Emperor, who could use it, uh, the Storm Striders are banned to Blitz. That's really sad before we get a really cool double uh, double uh, class hero, who could have used that and like Courage of Blade Hold or um, Brave Forge Bracers for whatever synergy might be relevant there. <sighs> so unfortunate. That could have been cool. I would have wanted to see that. Uh, getting back to the game here, though, we've got an Erase Face. Erase Face also not threatening too much if Nick decides to just play out everything on Evan's turn now. But uh, with two cards in hand and probably at least one resource floating, uh, Evan could easily just block whatever the Nick tries to throw at him right now. So Nick just opting to block the damage to conserve health and probably just uh, hit Evan back with, I think, another Wounded Bolt. 
uh, close. Life for, or uh, Findle's Fighting Spirit. So he gets a heal and come in for seven. This is also such a nice card that came out of the new set. One that I like to play in uh, my Brute deck, and I could see myself playing it in some other decks too, just to either mitigate blocking Phoenix Flames uh, against Fi to gain some health back. Oh, and Evan coming back with the Oaken Old. So this is going to be a huge momentum swing in Evan's favor, because even if Nick responds with something right now, he's only going to lose more cards and have less of a chance to arsenal something going into his next or going into Evan's next turn. So yeah, this is nasty. I love Oakenold, um, and it is kind of sad that we lost Pulse of Eisenloft with it to uh, just knock down that consistency just a little bit on Oldham's side. But when you get it off now, I guess it feels more rewarding when you have um, Oakenold come in with an actual double fuse. God, that feels good. It still sucks for the opponent, but you know, at least you can say you got it off and... Uh, Try Ooh, okay, so Nick actually arsenaled the extra defense reaction instead of a non-attack action to play. That way he could actually defend when one of these big attacks come in. That's actually not a bad idea when you're playing against Guardian specifically, because when you lose the momentum of, like, getting Oakenolded or Command and Conquered or, like, pummeled like that, you might as well go ahead and, uh, it, might, it would be better to block the damage than just take all the damage. And lose the cards at the same time. At the same time. But yeah, this match is turning out to be a lot more interesting than I was. Uh, than you might expect for two ice heroes going up against each other. It's not just the slog back and forth or slow back and forth. These players are definitely trying to optimize the amount of damage they can do each turn while not succumbing to the disruption that the other one plays. I wonder if Evan plays the Expose to the Elements against Icelander to try and break the Storm Striders. That would be really wild if he did. Honestly, if you can imagine it, breaking the Storm Striders before the Icelander has a proper chance to use it could like mean the difference between winning or losing the game late game. Winning the game late later, uh, when the health is lower, or when the Oldham commits to like a uh, I guess you could say a final attack with low resources to try and finish them off. It would be nice to see if he plays the exposed. I feel like this would be one of those matchups where if you're going to have it in your sideboard, this is like one of the best matchups to use it against if you can get it off. Evan have his uh, Endless Winter and Oaken Old in hand, so he's going to just Arsenal and pass if Nick doesn't have a response first. Honestly, if Nick does have a response, this would be the time to play it to try and rip a card out of Evan's hand, or try and see if he actually has, like, blue pitches to stop the damage you're gonna do. If he didn't arsenal another defense reaction anyway. I'm sure you guys can hear some of the background noise there. I think that was Matt laughing far in the background there. He's not even in the same room as me right now. He's just over, uh, he's over with the uh, Magic players right now who are drafting. <laughs> it's funny that we could hear him from that far away. Uh, looks like Nick and Evan are deciding whether or not Nick actually passed. Okay, yeah, looks like Nick actually passed uh, on the priority two, assuming Evan was going to just draw up. And uh, is opting to play the Enlightened Strike with Go again. So this is kind of interesting because whatever two cards that um, uh, Nick has left in hand. Ooh, he's got the Freezing Point. That's coming in for six now with the Frost Hex there. Not a bad swing back from uh, Nick, but if Evan... I believe Evan has the Oaken Old combo right in hand. So yeah, he's got the double fuse for it. So, Evan's definitely coming back with a Vengeance, coming in with the Oakenold Fuse, trying to knock some cards out of uh, Nick's hand, but Nick has, um, Nick still has the Storm Striders, and Evan, no, Evan still has the two cards in hand, obviously, the Fuse with, so Nick's not really threatening to knock him out, even with the Storm Striders, so he's just gonna have to respect uh, the Oakenold and try and uh, do his best to mitigate the effects here he can play out his hand to the point where the two cards at the bottom of the deck doesn't matter that'd be great but he won't be able to arsenal something going into evan's next turn if he does it's 
Honestly, though, I wasn't expecting Evan to be the one to take the life loss here, or the, or Nick to take the life lead here. Evan's definitely bleeding out faster, but I guess he feels like if he can keep up this level of disruption, he won't have to worry about actually, like, losing more. Uh, that really just depends on whatever Nick can personal during Evan's, or to play during Evan's turns, especially even though he has, like, cards to pitch. If he has something that hits just over that, then, well, he's gonna take the damage regardless. I wonder what Nick's thinking about. Nick's basically deciding, I guess, because if he has a defense reaction or an arsenal, he'd just be deciding what card to block with from hand. Um, but he doesn't have the coronet peak anymore to block damage, so I guess he might be deciding whether he wants to give up the tunic so he doesn't lose two cards from hand if it is a defense reaction. But if it's not, then he's just deciding whether or not he plays a card and risks losing having no arsenal the next time, or takes the damage, and then tries to make sure he has an arsenal for the next turn. Always an interesting decision. I like that this game makes you think on the fly a bit more than just having a, um, a board you try and set up, uh, or try and have a strategy that single-mindedly just tries to set up the same board game after game. With a little bit of uh, dynamic play with these hands that you have, you kind of have to think a bit more on the fly depending on what you draw into. Looks like Nick is opting to just take the damage so he can try and save more cards in his hand and try and swing back at Evan on his turn. Nick does get to look at the order he puts them. Uh, he puts the card on the bottom of his deck, but I don't think we're getting the second cycle in this game, so I don't think that matters too much. All right, Evan's going ahead and arsenaling probably the Earth card because Ice is more common in his deck or something he wants to see more often. I think I just saw the Expose of the Elements too, so oh yeah, that's Expose. That is probably the worst time for him to have Expose the... Oh my gosh. No resources left? Oh no, he has the Potion. Okay, so I think Evan's going to go ahead and try and get the Potion out of uh, Nick's hands so that he doesn't have it to play on his own turn. But uh, that was kind of wild there for a second. If Nick didn't have that potion, he would lose the card right now. So, Or lose the Storm Striders right now. So I guess Evan's happy to make it so he doesn't have the floating resources, though, for later. And uh, he's going to block four total, taking three with the Crown of Seeds blocking a damage. So honestly, not a bad turn for Evan and Nick. Nick being able to stop the Storm Striders from popping, but Evan getting the potion out of the way for later. Evan opting to go ahead and pitch both cards instead of uh, using the Tunic counter, I guess. He has a Pummel, though. He could have arsenaled that Pummel for later. Maybe he's just expecting Nick to have something to get cards out of his hand. Yeah, he does have the Insidious Chill, so I guess if he didn't have the extra cards to pitch, he'd just risk discarding the Pummel anyway. How unfortunate. Honestly, this is just a vanilla 6, though. If Nick thinks he has a wild enough hand, he could probably hit for a lot of damage, or at least try and hit for a lot of damage to get cards out of Evan's hand, and then come back in with the Storm Striders on his next turn when he has less cards to defend with. Or he could just do it right now! Okay, looks like Nick's trying to close out the game here. Pitching for the Storm Striders. What card, is he, what card does he have in hand? Does he have Freezing Point? looks like he's got an Aether Ice Vein at least. If he Aether Ice Veins into a Staff Swing, I think that does... That'll do like a total of 8 damage. 7 because of the uh, Tunic Counter at least. But 7 is a lot of damage that uh, would bring... <laughs> oh man, who do you want to see win this, Ryan? Uh, I'll be honest, I want to see Icelander win just because she's the newer hero and seeing Wizards play out is a little more interesting to me than the Guardian. Uh, Evan and Nick are both friends, so I do wish both of them the best, but I do hope that Icelander wins, personally. Icelander, to me, is just the more interesting hero. Oh, it? Okay, it looks like Evan and Nick are just powwowing on what the optimal play is here. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, so like I said, Nick and Evan are both friends here, too, and since they're just playing for the Yoji, um, in this armory, 
I guess they just want to see how much damage they can optimize for this turn to see like how it would play out if both of them were uh, or uh, how it would play out just in general more of just seeing what would happen instead of like trying to play too seriously here I guess I think Nick is playing or making the right decision here though off of uh, Evan's recommendation I guess yeah, he's gonna use the Hypothermia to hit with one with the Frost Hex, and then swing with the Staff to get him three extra damage. Evan opting to go ahead and take the extra damage from the, uh, what's it called, the Frostbite? He's probably saving the Tunic counter for something on the next turn. <laughs> it doesn't look like Nick has a great hand to respond with, or a great card to Arsenal to use against Evan during his turn, but I guess that's why Storm Striders are a thing. So he's going to probably play the Aether Ice Vein here. I don't think he has a card to fuse it with, though, which is unfortunate. Or no, the E-Strike. That's probably even better. Is he going to draw a card or plus two? Plus two, okay. So Evan or Nick is just opting to come in for the seven, forcing Evan to respect it as it is coming in through for lethal. So that Evan does have to respond with some defense. And so he doesn't have an arsenal. He can't just, like, crown away some of that damage, which is nice. Nice for Nick, of course. Bad for Evan. I wonder if we're going to get anything else for Oldham in, that might be Oldham relevant in Dynasties. Considering Oldham got a few buffs with uh, Uprising, since there were ice cards that he could play as well. I don't think there are any of those ice cards that he plays regularly, though. Maybe Hypothermia to go ahead and like use against like Fi or some other Go Again user, um, and then arsenaling a card for their own turn. I don't think he plays the Channel Bleak Expanse or anything, especially since that stops you from using Crown of Seeds. All right, Evan coming in with uh, the hammer. Three floating resources if you count the tuna counter. Is Nick going to try and close off the game here, though? That's the question. He does have Storm Striders, but I know he doesn't have a non-attack action in Arsenal. At least not a blue one. So he won't be able to play that down. But he is going to Storm Striders, it looks like. Or at least he's looking at it. I think he's supposed to have a tuna counter right now, but he forgot to tunic up one of these turns. Oh, well, we'll just wing it. We'll see what he's got. Ooh, he's got the Heart of Findel, but no health gain this time, even as the Icelander for once has more health than his opponent. Uh, let's see what he plays, though. If he plays, like, an Ice card, he gets the Frostbite. Okay, so there's... Okay, so he did have the Aether Ice Vein waiting in the Arsenal. I think he takes it, though, then, because he's going to do at least two damage and then three damage with that. Yep. Icelander takes the win this game. That is amazing. He didn't even have to fuse the uh, Aether Ice Vein to go ahead and suck some resources out with the uh, Insidious Chill. Actually, that doesn't matter. He didn't have cards. He didn't have cards that he had to forcibly discard anyway. So, but yeah, good game from both players. Nick gets to walk away with the Yoji promo and goes 3-0 in our armor event tonight. Nice. Yeah, like I said, both people are friends, and I was wishing them both the best, but I am kind of glad to see how uh, Icelander was able to close it out here with the uh, Stormstrider play. Looks like they're just having a friendly post-game chat about uh, what cards they use against each other, or uh, expose the elements against Icelander, or freezing point against Oldham. Uh, I think Expose the Elements is the right decision, but when he had the potion up, it's just like, yeah, obviously you're never going to get that to get destroyed, so. GG to both players. Good game, and uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, remember, to you, uh, remember to thank The Haven for hosting these or letting us host these games for you guys to view each week by going to thehaventabletop.com with Team ACG as your code for 10% off all your fla uh, flab, all your fab singles. Again, that's thehaventabletop.com. Unfortunately, the Haven Games apparently wasn't available, but uh, maybe we'll get it. Uh, maybe we'll get it later if it becomes available. That'd be nice. It's a little less confusing. But yeah, good game to both players here, and Nick is our champion today. And uh, we will be getting uh, the mats distributed for the People's Champion and whatever other mats they want to distribute for this week. And next time you guys will see us, we'll be playing with the new armor kit. It will be after Worlds though. 
We will try and do a live stream on Wednesday before Worlds to go ahead and uh, talk about our excitement or obviously talk about a bunch of the spoilers, probably even some of the spoilers that are coming out live as they come out. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, DM Armada starts the uh, week of spoilers off on, on Sunday. Like I said, my guess is the Assassin. If you guys have other guesses, feel free to post them in the chat or come join us on... Um, well, I guess join us after the reveal on Wednesday when we go ahead and talk about it live, but I'm, that, that's my guess. I'm guessing it's the Assassin. We're going to see the Assassin on Sunday, and it's going to be the first thing to get us started off for the spoiler season. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to Worlds. Going to play The Calling. Going to play Reinar. Going to try my best. And then I'm going to play Rock. I'm going to play the biggest Rock you ever seen. Playing that Marvel... <laughs> uh... I can't wait to get a Marvel Rock. I hope I get a Marvel Rock, or one of my friends does, because then they will trade it to me, probably, because I am Brute, and they are all the other characters. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Looking forward to the spoiler season start on Sunday, and we will see you in two weeks uh, after the... for the next Armory, anyway. See you in two weeks for the next Armory, but we will talk to you guys on Wednesday for our weekly live stream. So tune in for that, and we'll talk about the spoilers that come out. Uh, other than that, have a great night, guys, and uh, have a happy Halloween.